so it's Friday night. Um, it's about six o'clock and I'm heading actually into my classroom right now. Olivia is at a friend's house and Landon and Trisha are here at school at the Mother Sundance. I figure I might as well use this time on my own to get some things done in my classroom and uh, I thought I'd shoot a little vlog for all of you as well. So we're gonna go talk math. There's something eerily exciting and nice about being here on a Friday night when the building is dark and quiet and I mean I love the people I work with, I love my staff, I love my kids obviously and I love my job but it's kind of nice to be able to just walk into a dark hallway into this classroom relaxed not much going on turn on some music loud and uh and get to work so i'm gonna work for a while and get this mess over here organized and then we're gonna talk some fun math ideas for all of you to try uh here pretty soon but i gotta get to this first all right guys it is like i said friday night i kind of have my desk cleaned off a little bit uh, like I always say, th this gets messy because I'm not usually here unless I'm working with a student or a couple students then I just have to push stuff out of the way and, and make space, but I had some free time tonight so I came in and cleaned it off. It's looking better. It's not perfect, but whose desk is? I don't know, maybe yours is, but mine's not. So I thought I'd take some time since I still have some free time to talk to you guys about some fun math stuff. I'm going to show you another uh, chant that my class did or a song that we wrote together all about decomposing numbers. And decomposing numbers, is such, that's such a big word for kids. It means just, just breaking stuff down is the way we talk about it. We just break things apart. That's what decompose means. We talked about what it means when a pumpkin decomposes or uh, when the leaves decompose down on the ground. And so we're going to talk about how we break down numbers. So we're going to start with this little song that I wrote with the kids. It's to the tune of Wheels on the Bus. Listen to, to them sing it. They, they do such a great job and it clicks with them. It gets them thinking about this. And then we're going to talk about how I use a couple different tools to do this and uh, answer a question that my friend Pete Harry from Harry Kindergarten Music had. And... Uh, We'll get to it, so watch this chant or the song. Here you go. You got your frame drawn, right? Yeah. Yes. And at the top we have, what does it say? Blank, blank equals blank, blank plus, plus blank. blank. Okay, we're gonna start with a number. We're gonna break it down. What's that big word? D. -hum -hum. Good job. A number and break it down. Break it down, break it down. Take a number and break it down and tell me what you found. Our number is five. So how many counters should be at the top of your board right now? Five. So now with your five counters, take that number and break it down. Break it down, break it down. Take that number and break it down and tell me what you found. As you can tell, they absolutely love singing that song. They they sing it so well too, and we just learned that last week. I just wrote it. And um, now I want to talk to you about what they were doing in the video and what they were using. So the other day, my friend, Mr. Harry, put up a question about how to use the iPads for math and um, numbers and counters and things like that. I think there's some question along those lines. And I said that we either use our marker boards but sometimes we use the iPad and an app called Doodle Buddy to draw our frames. And he asked about those frames. So Pete, this is to answer your question. What I do is I go into the app Doodle Buddy, and I have the kids do this on their iPad sometimes too. And Doodle Buddy is just a drawing app. So I use this app for writing, for math, uh, art, anything that they want to do that they get to create. If we're writing on it, I always have them use a stylus, so they work on that tripod grip. Uh, but for math, we, we just use our fingers because we're using counters and shapes and things like that. So what I do is I have them choose a color and then they draw their frame. And the way that I tell them to draw a frame is like an upside down window. So we draw the big section on top and then we put that like that. So that is our window that we draw. The top they know is where they start with their large group or their total of counters, and then they get to break it down. So as you saw them singing and then moving those pieces around, what they were doing was they were starting with counters. And sometimes I use the iPad, sometimes they use the iPad, sometimes I just do it on the board with them like you saw me doing in the video. But what we would do is you can either use, like they've got all these little emoji stickers that you can use, or we can just draw. So I might have them draw big circles. If we're decomposing the number five, we might just draw five big circles like our counters. And then we're gonna sing our song, that they, they take a number and break it down, break it down and tell me what you found. So I have them X off what they see. So they're gonna X off maybe two, and they're gonna move them down here. And then they're gonna X off three, and then they're gonna move them down here, right? Now I always have them X them off because I want them to see that that large number is gone. 
if they still see the large number there, and then they put these down here, they're thinking that they need to count those too. And that's an important thing when you decompose numbers. Don't let them see what's still there. So we either erase it or we cross it off or when we're using counters, they just move those counters down. But that's the tough spot when you do something with an iPad like this because they can still see them. So I make sure that we know to cross them off so they know that they are no longer counting these. Oops, I just didn't add there. I'm fall to free apps. And then these are the ones that they're gonna use. So that's one way to do it on the iPad. So Pete, I hope that answered your question about what I mean by a frame. The other way we do it is just simply with their marker boards that they all have in their carpet bag. And we draw our frame. They can write their sentence up here. This is exactly what they were doing in the video. So in their carpet bag, they all have a bag of 10 counters. So they get their counters out. And again, this is exactly what you just saw. Get their counters out. They lay them down on the table. We might decompose the number six, for say. Okay, so then they know that they can start. We always talk about what you need on top. You start with the big number on top. You have to have those numbers up there before you start. You have to make sure that the number's there. So we double count, one, two, three, four, five, six. We know that that is six. We put it in the box. And then they can decompose the number to maybe four and two. So they're gonna write down six equals four plus two to match what they just did. And then again, they don't see that original number up on top. That's again, an important skill that they actually see that number gone so that they don't try to count those large ones as well. So that's just a quick little math tip for you that you can use when you're working on decomposing numbers. Um, my kids have picked up that skill like that. It's something they're all grasping really, really, really easily. We also do this with, um, you know, you can use teddy bears, you can use cubes or pattern blocks or linking chains. You don't always have to use counters. The little erasers, you know my little eraser drawers, guys, that I did in a video a while back? All these little, you know, the dollar spot erasers. I've been buying these up like crazy. These are great to use with this. Instead of the boring old counters, that they're all used to. Let them use these guys to decompose. We're going to do that next week a little bit too. It's a great way to keep math fun. And it goes along with that hashtag that I always use. Math is more than a worksheet. I could easily be doing this on a worksheet that came with our curriculum. There's not the physical, you know, that physical attribute of moving things around or touching it and doing that. And I feel like that's so important at this age that they have to be able to, to make it happen. And on a worksheet, you don't really get to do that. So this way I also feel like is, is repetition, repetition, repetition. That's a big one at this age to soak up this knowledge that if you're on an iPad or you're on this marker board, we are repeating this step again and again and again and again and again. We're on a worksheet. You might be answering three to four questions. They are getting it so fast by doing this over and over and over again. And like you saw in the video, they get super excited about it. So I hope you enjoyed that quick little math tip. Uh, use it in your classroom. Feel free to share, tag, like it, and uh, share it with the teacher you know. Enjoy your weekend. I'm going to go home and probably edit this episode or read a book and uh, hang out with Peggy the Pug. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Make learning fun, guys. And uh, remember, math is more than a worksheet. Have fun with this. Have a great weekend.